What the hell? Where do I plug this thing in? Oh. This is the brand new M1 Ultra Mac Studio with a 48 core GPU and 64 gigabytes of RAM. And I asked my subscribers a couple of days ago what sort of content they wanted to see. Gaming was one of the most highly voted ones. So guys, this one is for you. Now, quick disclaimer as well, you should not buy this machine for gaming. In fact, you probably should not buy any kind of Mac for gaming at all. Even a lower end PC will destroy these machines, but it's still fun to see how far Macs and Apple Silicon have come in relation to gaming over the last couple of years. So with that being said, let's just get straight into the video. Now you'll see I have a proper gaming monitor hooked up here. And this monitor is from BenQ. It's their Mobius range, which is a 27 inch one millisecond response time IPS 165 Hertz 1440p panel. It's actually a really, really good, relatively budget gaming monitor. So if you guys wanna see a review on that, let me know down below. Now, if we jump into the display settings for this Mac Studio, you can see that we do have the gaming monitor coming up properly here. So there's the BenQ monitor. Uh, for some reason, it's only saying 144 hertz, even though this is 165 hertz monitor. Now, I've also got the full gaming setup here. So gaming keyboard, gaming mouse, it's all plugged directly into the back of the Mac Studio. I have a HDMI cable going from the studio into the monitor. So we should have zero response time or lag from any of these accessories. So if there is gonna be issues, it's gonna be the Mac Studio itself. So in this video, I'm gonna run through a few games in Mac OS, and we're also gonna load up Parallels and Windows 11 and just see what kind of performance we can achieve. So we're gonna start off with some Tomb Raider. All right, so we're gonna jump into the settings first of all. We're gonna to go to Display and Graphics. I'm actually gonna set this to 1080p just for this particular test. Uh, we're gonna leave the refresh rate at 144 hertz. We're also gonna jump and we're just gonna put it at the highest settings. Um, I'll leave, I'll turn these settings off because I don't typically use them when I'm gaming. Uh, so we're gonna save that. Okay, so we are in game at the moment. Now remember guys, this is at the highest settings at 1080p and we are getting about 130 FPS. So when we're running around and moving a lot, uh, it does dip down to 100. We are getting a little bit of screen tearing, nothing too crazy. Uh, if I kind of jump around. Now Tomb Raider isn't 100% optimized for Macs and Apple Silicon. Uh, there was some work through Metal to actually optimize the engine a little bit more, um, but it's still not 100% native and compatible. But as we can see, I mean, it's not doing badly at all. Like this is definitely playable. You are getting some dropped frames and some screen tearing here and there. Uh, it's definitely playing back at over 100 FPS. I can feel that on the screen. Okay, let's pause that. Let's jump into options and let's bump this up to 1440p. So now we're at 1440p. Um, seeing a little bit of a drop in FPS, about 85 now, but you know, it's still not too bad. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a Mac, a uh, $4,000 Mac. So, uh, you know, for that kind of money, it's not a good experience, but compared to previous Macs, I think this is pretty impressive. Now, moving on to some CSGO, you guys may have seen from my M1 Pro video a couple of months ago, uh, CSGO could not get past about 100 FPS. Um, so we're gonna see if throwing more CPU cores and GPU cores and an extra 32 gigabytes of RAM is gonna have any kind of effect here. So jumping into the video settings, I'm just gonna leave everything at default and I am gonna drop it down to 1080p. Now, typically on most Windows PCs, you're gonna be seeing in excess of 300 plus FPS on this particular game. Like I said before, it really does not seem to run well on Mac OS, even on this particular M1 Ultra chip. Uh, as you can see, we are getting around 100 FPS, um, but there's a lot of screen tearing uh, and it's just not a very good or enjoyable experience compared to even a $800 Windows gaming PC. So let's see if we can try and get a few guys over here. Uh, definitely getting a lot of screen tearing. It's actually quite hard to hit people. The actual input lag doesn't seem to be too bad. Uh, we're, not, we're now sitting at around 100 FPS. Let's see if I can get this last guy. Okay, let's move on to Parallels. Now, I've been using Parallels on this machine for a couple of hours now, and it's actually been a pretty good experience, but the gaming experience uh, is not the greatest. So let me explain. If we come up here into Parallels settings and I come to the control center uh, and I click on the little settings icon, 
If I come in here to hardware, you can see that for some reason, Parallels is not letting you allocate more than eight CPU cores at the moment. As you know, this machine has 20 CPU cores. Uh, if I try to change it to other and then increase it to say 10, it just doesn't work. It gives me an error message. Um, so I just leave it at eight. Uh, memory, however, you can allocate as much as you want. I've got 32 gigabytes, which should be enough to run Parallels and also the game inside Parallels, while also leaving 32 gigabytes of RAM for Mac OS. Uh, so it seems like Parallels needs to be updated to take advantage of the extra CPU cores in here. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we will see those updates take place. So starting with Overwatch, I chose this game because a lot of you guys play it and you enjoy the game. And also because just like CSGO, it's relatively easy to run. You don't need a super beefy computer to get a decent FPS. So jumping into the options, we'll have a look at some of the settings we are playing with. So you can see I have it in full screen mode at 1440p. Uh, I don't have the FPS capped at all, uh, and I've also got the graphics quality set to ultra. So basically maxed out the highest graphics settings you can get. Okay, so now we're in a game and you can see we're getting around 100 FPS. Uh, it does drop down quite a bit, uh, and sometimes it'll drop down to about 50. We're also getting a lot of screen tearing, as you can see there. Um, so definitely not a super, super smooth experience. Uh, very similar to what is happening in CSGO. So as you guys have just seen there, uh, it is when you get into combat with someone, when you have actual characters popping up on the screen, uh, the experience is not good. You get a lot of screen tearing, a lot of dropped FPS, uh, and typically most of the time you will just die. Um, so it looks good on paper. You can see we're still getting around 100 FPS, but as soon as you get into any kind of action with another player, uh, that FPS is going to dip. As you can see there again, uh, it's just... It's almost completely unplayable once you see another player and actually start to really sort of get into it. Moving on to GTA 5, again, we are still within parallels. We're playing this at 1080p at medium settings. And in terms of FPS, it's okay. It's not the greatest. Uh, we're sitting at around 40 FPS here uh, and still some screen tearing and dropped frames here or there. I will say after playing this game for about 45 minutes today, uh, the screen tearing and drop frame seems to be less than Overwatch and CSGO. Um, but when I move the mouse around there, you can see there's quite a few frames that are dropped. So let's just quickly steal a car. We'll get one of these bad boys and drive around, see if we can decrease that frame rate a bit. Uh, we're just sitting at about 35. And guys, this game is almost 10 years old at this point. Um, it should be running at a consistent 100 plus FPS at these settings, but... Um, yeah, it's just, it's not bad. Like if you were just playing this as a single player game, uh, just for some fun, maybe you wanted to, maybe you wanted to emulate some old Windows games. Uh, I know Batman Arkham Asylum worked. That's a fun game I used to play. Those types of games will work fine in parallels, but um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely playable, but it's not something that I would recommend getting a Mac for, of course. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to alt tab out of this and we're gonna jump into Activity Monitor and just have a look at how hot the system is, how much RAM's being used, all that kind of good stuff. So looking at the CPU, you can see the CPU really isn't being used that much at all. Uh, again, Parallels is limited to eight cores at the moment. In terms of memory, uh, we're using about 42 gigabytes of RAM. And Parallels here, Windows 11, using about 33, which makes sense. Uh, we allocated it roughly 32 gigabytes. In terms of actual heat and noise from the Mac Mini, you guys know if you've been a fan of this channel for a while, I typically do decibel comparisons and also thermal tests. I literally don't need to do that here or even when gaming natively on Mac OS because it produces no heat, there's no fan noise. I do have TG Pro running. Unfortunately, it has not been updated yet, so I can't give you the temperatures of cores and GPU cores, um, but right now I'm sitting 30 centimeters away from it, it's not hot, and it's making zero fan noise. So as you can see, even with all the power of the M1 Ultra chip, it doesn't seem to be enough to overcome all the shortcomings with gaming on a Mac and Mac OS. Maybe in the future, if we see games updated to use the Metal API, which is supported on Mac, or perhaps we'll get some more updates to Parallels so we can virtualize these games a little bit better, it might be a better experience, but for now, it's really not that different to an M1 Pro or an M1 Max MacBook. Apart from that, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. More content coming on the M1 Ultra Mac Studio. Stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one.